Good morning, Calvary. So glad to have you join us here for today's episode of Your Word for the Day as we are unpacking the book of Proverbs. And today's question for you is how do you respond to correction? Maybe it's from a spouse, a friend, a boss, or someone else in your life. How do you respond? Do you embrace and accept it? Do you challenge it? Do you become defensive and argumentative? Do you look for ways to critique them next time and, and, and even the score? See, how we respond to correction is really important because the reality is we will not only receive correction from people, but the truth is that if you're a follower of Jesus, you will receive correction from God as well. All of us as followers of Jesus are in a constant state of growth and development, meaning that there is refinement and correction that must take place in our life. And if you've been around Calvary for any length of time, you've probably heard us state that it's impossible to follow Jesus and stay where you are. He desires for us to grow. He desires for us to stop sinful and destructive habits. And he desires for us to develop our life to be more like his son, Jesus. That's why we read this in Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. It says, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline. Do not be weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves him who he loves as a father, as a father the son in whom he delights. Did you catch that? It says God will correct those that he loves. In fact, his correction and discipline is a sign and indicator of his care for us in life. See, back to my question of how you respond to to these moments. Many of us struggle to respond to discipline and correction properly. And even if we respond well in the moment, it's so easy for us to mentally assign some kind of ill intent to the person who corrected us and and think that they are, are, are angry with us or out to hurt us. But the reality is, sometimes the most loving thing someone can do for you is to correct you. Because when people see us doing something wrong and say nothing, it shows that they don't actually have concern for our life and our future. Now, as I was thinking about this, I was reminded of an event that happened to me in college. I was a, a sophomore in college, and throughout this time, I served on the tech team at the, the, on campus there for the local chapel and worship gatherings on campus. And I was helping with a large conference the school was putting on. I was helping tear down, and I was asked to put away a large audio cable. It was a cable that was about 200 feet long, and this was a very large cable that required loading into this giant wheeled box to go back to the rental house because it was too heavy to actually carry the whole thing all together. And as I'm putting away the last few feet of this giant cable, I overhear just a little ways away some of the full-time tech employees making comments and snide remarks about how I put it in, implying that I was doing it wrong and it would be a nightmare for the next person that would be using this cable. And I initially was frustrated at their mockery because they're standing by not helping. And, and, And initially that was the thing that frustrated me the most. But a few years later, I saw the event in a much different way. Because a couple years later, someone walked over in a very similar moment and corrected my technique for storing and putting away these cables. They showed me that there was a way to store them that would make it to where you could take them out with them not being tangled or knotted. And for years, I struggled with these cables and just this giant tangled mess when you would remove them. And immediately as this person was correcting me and sharing with me the right way to do it, My mind flashed back to those two older experienced techs who several years prior watched me struggle and do things the wrong way, but sat back and laughed and mocked and didn't care enough about me to correct me. Their lack of concern caused a great deal of headache to me, as well as frustration to those around me, I'm sure, that could have been fixed if they cared enough to simply correct me. See, we like to make Uh, these personal corrections feel like personal attacks and take it to mean that people don't like us and they want to hurt us, but the opposite is actually true. Correction and discipline is an act of love and concern for people. And that's why we're told here in, in Proverbs to not despise the Lord's correction in our life. So next time you feel the Lord nudging and correcting you, understand it's because he loves you and he wants better for you than where you currently are. And next time someone comes to you with a concern or correction, understand that it's likely because they love and care about you and in your role is to respond with grace and understanding. It won't be easy, but there's a good chance that receiving it well will bless your life. Today, Calvary, know that God loves you and God wants the best for you, even in those moments where it's a little uncomfortable for you. 
Hope that you have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.